Any questions? If not, I'm going to go straight to TRVL. Have a look at that. So uh, there's a couple of things going on with TRVL uh, in terms of the price. And I just wanted to go over them quickly. Um, firstly, I've noticed that the Mexi exchange is extremely illiquid at the moment. So I think just be a bit careful when you're buying on Mexi. You see these wicks? They are market buys, but uh, they're very they're very low volume market buys. Look, sixty eight k, sixty eight k is is relatively speaking, it's quite low volume, and then the price moved fourteen percent, fourteen percent for a sixty eight k buy, and you have the same problem here. You have relatively speaking low volume market buys and then the price is moving quite a lot in the upward direction so you have to be really careful with buying on Mexi at the moment especially if there's any kind of market buys uh, this isn't really positive news because um I mean, I don't know if it's positive or negative, to be honest with you. It just means that people, if they're buying, they're going to they're gonna get really bad prices on Mexi. Um, simply because there's just really low liquidity. I wish I could see the order books. I probably can, actually. Um, let me try and log in. Let's quickly have a look. Let's see. And I log in. Let me try and log in and have a look at the order books as well. Log in with a QR code. I can do that. Um, how do I do this? Let me try and log in with my QR code. That didn't work. Stupid. <laughs> Scan this QR code of Mexi app to log in. What the hell? Why did they make things easy? Security. Oh, there it is. Is that it? Google verification code. Oh, yeah, got to do that. Yeah. Should log in. Yes. Let's have a look. Oh God, look at that. You see this? Uh, basically up to 3.5.3 cents, there's no liquidity. And then you get start to get a very small amount, a bit higher. Um, oh, there's no liquidity, look, you see that? This is Mexi. So there's a lot of buy liquidity on Mexi in comparison to the sell liquidity on Mexi. This is, is a really low liquid environment to the upside of Mexi. Um, basically, no one is selling. That's what I'm seeing. No one is selling at these prices. So just bear that in mind. If we do get a, like a, some kind of... Um, increase in demand at market then i i i expect on mexi will be the uh, the price will go up quite fast um let me just quickly have a look at the other exchanges because i'm i'm not sure that everyone realizes um how illiquid the environment is right now so i'm just going to quickly have a look at 
at all the exchanges if I can. Um, okay, I'm going to have to do this as well. That's fine. It's good to see that there's security. <laughs> Let me see if I can log in here. And people can see that I've got maximum security on my account, so <laughs> no one is thinking, oh my god, easy passwords to hack. Let's have a look here. This is Gate, if people aren't familiar with Gate. Depth. How do I increase the depth? Press to move. Okay. Look at that. There you go. So on a uh, gate, it's a little bit more liquid to the upside and a little bit less. You see that? So there's more sellers than buyers on gate at the moment. So just, I think if anyone is looking to, to, to market buy, do it on gate, don't do it on Mexi, just be very careful. And if anyone's looking to market sell, then do it on Mexi, don't do it on gate. That would be my advice. Just simply because I'm seeing that Mexi on the up to the upside is extremely illiquid here. On gate, all the way up to 6.4, I mean, it's still very liquid, but it's a little bit better. As you can see, it's a little bit better. Um, and then let me have a look at Bybit quickly. And prob probably, actually, I won't go through it again, through the whole lot. But I just wanted to just make people aware that Mexi is very liquid at the moment. I think actually the other thing I was looking at on Bybit is Bybit, there's a lot of large volume limit orders at these levels that are absorbing the price. So that's the other thing to pay to pay attention with. I'm not gonna maybe I can show you actually. Oh no, that's fine. Let's see if I can log in. It might let me still. So I wasn't really buying and selling. I, I do like to test the liquidity out uh, just to see how liquid it is. So don't think that I'm buying and selling. Sometimes I like to just try things out just to experiment to see because uh, I was curious about the Mexi liquidity. Um, let me just increase this. So look, if you see on the buy side, we have a large amount of buys orders here, look. So I 
go a little bit lower, there's like 142,000 limit orders at 0 0.048, at 0 0.047. You see how it goes up? So there's a lot of... Uh, And then with the sell side, there's a large amount of liquidity much higher up. So if you see these sell side liquidity, it basically starts at nine cents, then 12 cents, then 18 cents, and then 25 cents. Yeah, so a lot of people have already put their uh, limit orders for higher prices on Bybit. And I think the reason they've done that is just in case the price starts to push up and rally their orders already in place and it will require volume to push it through those levels so i think that's quite smart but in the lower kind of range i can see that there's a lot more liquidity uh for buyers so what's happening now is that the the price is being absorbed so all at this range, market buyers, they're being uh, sellers are being absorbed. So when I have a look, if you can see this uh, this MACD, this is the two hour chart. Let me go a bit closer to the one hour chart. If you can see the the price is going up like that. And the MACD is kind of, kind of going down. It's easier to see on the two hour chart. See that? See the MACD is going down and the price is actually going up. So there are, there is some absorption happening in this higher range. Uh, it's very different to this price action before. You see here how the price is going down and the MACD was going down. See that? So it's quite different, the behavior from this price action here and this price action here. So, and it, here the MACD was going down much steeper. Here it's a lot more gentle and the price is gently going up. So there is hidden bullin, bullish divergence in this range that we're forming now in, these, in the higher part of this range. Effectively, what I'm seeing is that the selling, the market selling is being absorbed at these prices at the moment. And uh, we have to see how that plays out because we still will need market buying to push the price up. And then the question is always going to be the same. If we do get an increase in volume, to take the price up we have to then see if that continues with increasing volume to push through those limit orders that are placed higher or if we see another kind of take profit at market and then 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 to see where the price settles again and so that's the kind of price action that i'm potentially complementing uh contemplating i'm not quite sure that we're ready to go up just yet but i can't predict that and i think the reason why is because i'm still seeing that we're into resistance and ideally what i would want us to do is go up and kind of have some kind of back test on a significant level and so even though on KuCoin, when I'm looking at KuCoin, um, we are at a very um, key level. Let me see if I can find. That's basically it. So on KuCoin, if you remember, remember in the past, I said that this 236, which was the KuCoin um, Fib level, which had on KuCoin had reacted 
at this level we are back above it and it looks like we're trying to hold this kucoin level yeah so we just need to now start flipping other exchanges into support and i think I've, even though mex is the most liquid at the moment because mex has the correct higher time from the probably mex is the one but i mean i don't know because it's so illiquid it's hard to know if it's going to be the one to identify a flip but when you look at this previous range it's long range you can see that probably we once we get up there then that will be the area to consolidate for continuation probably that's probably what i'm thinking and that that would then mean that we're clearly above the support and resistance flip on KuCoin and then probably the other exchanges as well. So we're still looking for that to happen. Eventually the sellers will exhaust at these levels and then the price will just go up. Yeah, eventually. And this is what's happening now. You see right now the price is at 5.1 cents on MEX. On GATE it's at 5.06. On uh, KuCoin it's at 5.04. On Bybit is at 5.11. Eventually what's happening is that these higher levels, these higher values of numbers are becoming accepted as the correct price for TRVL. It's a psychological uh, idea, it's a psychological acceptance. And so naturally, if you're thinking about TRVL, if the price was to suddenly come back down to 2.8 you'd be like oh my god this is really cheap and you'd buy it up you know and so eventually what happens is you have this kind of idea of time where the longer you linger at a certain price the more accepted that price becomes as the correct value for the asset or the token in question and we've now been ranging above three cents pretty much since the beginning of December, pretty much. It's quite a large amount of time. It's like nearly three months we've been above three cents now. So I think now if the price was to suddenly drop to three cents, I think there would be a mass, massive frenzy to buy TRVL, just simply because we haven't seen those prices since the end of December, since the beginning of January, potentially. And that's kind of how it works. And so eventually when we do go to the higher prices, and this is really healthy price action before an impulse. And obviously then when we do have an impulse, we just need the volume to come in because that's going to be a very important uh, indicator for us because that could signify if we get an impulse with volume, that could signify that the price will then no longer return to the lower levels, yeah? So if suddenly we started seeing large amounts of volume get put into the price action, which pushes it up, pushes it up, pushes it up in a very impulsive way, effectively what it's signaling to us is that those people who are by selling and taking profit, they're their, their volume is being bought up by new entrants to the market. And when you're going up with volume, um, it correctly identifies the price action as healthy. If you go, if we suddenly go up and there's no volume, so I'll give you an idea. If you look at how the price went up last year from uh, the end of December, the beginning of the January 23, all the way up to 14 cents, you can clearly see that the volume was gradually diminishing as the price was going up. And that's very bearish, actually. That's not a good sign. We don't want to see that. What we actually want to start seeing as the price goes up is what we want. We need to see the volume at the very least to be flat. But best case scenario, we want to see 
increasing volume. We need to see the volume increasing. And it doesn't have to be like this. It could just be a gentle increase. You know, maybe one bar standing out. That would be fine. Yeah. And that would give us the idea that maybe then these prices are now accepted because of the volume. So that, that's the other kind of acceptance where the volume gives you the acceptance. And so right now, apart from this, and this is max, apart from this, um, I'll go back to KuCoin, apart from this initial spike back at the beginning of January, the 12th of January, uh, we are seeing a, a slight increase in volume in this rise. So it's not unhealthy. And if you if I get rid of that large candle, which skews the uh, the output, it hasn't been unhealthy. That's what I'm saying. Like the green bars, you can see that there's volume with those green bars. It is slightly dropping off. Okay, as it goes up. But we haven't really gone up that much. You could almost argue that we really haven't gone up. Um, that we're still going sideways. But what you want now is as we do take the next step, however we go, we want to see the volume increase. We have to see the That's really important. It's really important to see that. We can't just... We can't just go up into high prices on low volume. Uh, the, the main reason why is because eventually someone is going to take profit and then that will just pull the price down if there's low volume. We want the volume to be increasing. All right, so I think that's my uh, TRVL update. I can't see anything else of note. Um, let me have a look at this. BTC I deleted my 200 by accident this thing so I have to put it back um, 200 All right <laughs> Yeah, the golden cross is nicely in play still. There's no changes. The 50 is going up. Um, we're just consolidating in this in this range now, as far as uh, Bitcoin is concerned. I don't really see any significant changes of note. I mean, I would argue that this is bullish price action above the point of control which is another range and eventually what you want to see is probably what we want to see now is continued volume being put in at these levels and then eventually the price to go up eventually that's what we want to see to the next level and the next level looks as though as far as i mean there's a little bit of a volume gap here so potentially it's it's up here. Potentially it's a bit higher up. As far as Bitcoin is concerned, probably what we want to, to do is get back up there and start putting in volume in this previous range. And that doesn't matter really, because even though the point of control is at the bottom and that's quite healthy, As we go up, as long as the point of control stays underneath us, we're fine. Yeah. So even if we were to go up and then the point of control was then to suddenly move to the to the higher part of the range, in most circumstances that would be bearish. 
unless of course we're just consolidating still consolidating above the point of control as long as the point of control still acts as support that's fine it only becomes bearish if you consolidate and you flip the point of control to the higher part of the range and then you lose the point of control that's when the point of that's when that price action becomes bearish because then that point of control which should be support potentially then could become resistance yeah and so at the moment because we're above the point of control and the point of control has moved to the lower part of the range this is bullish we have to keep an eye on how the point of control behaves when we go up into this higher range and start to put in a little bit of volume in this higher part of the range and to see because the volume is quite a lot here if you look the volume is up to here and at the moment the current volume point of control is here so it wouldn't really require much volume in that this next higher range to move the point of control from this lower part to this to, to this higher part because the point of control only signifies um the highest volume node of the range as long as we if we were to achieve that and as long as the the price section is above it then it's not a problem yeah and so ideally what then you would want is you want it to align with the lowest lower the low of the value area when we start eventually putting in volume in a higher part of the screen we're still not there yet but it's a really good sign that we're prices back above the golden cross and the point of control and we just have to see what happens it's a good place to accumulate with respect to bitcoin in comparison to bitcoin right now and as we go up to the higher time frames you can clearly see look on the three-day chart that the 50 moving average is holding the price as support you see that it's clearly holding the price to support here uh, so we are on support right now um, and it, even though the 200 on the on the three day chart is moving down we have taken liquidity from that level one time already and the way it works is if we were to go up and then to go up eventually it will give way eventually that's what happens you test the level many times and eventually it, it gives way and then when i look at the so the only other the only thing is that right now this 50 weekly moving average is kind of looking very bearish but and this is the but um we're losing these high these high numbers so this is the next 50 candle that we're losing the close is here so next week we're replacing this higher number at 3150 with wherever we close this week with say 1000 and even though this might still go down a little bit it will start it will start to flatten out it will start to flatten out and then what we want is we want the price to get above it back test to go up and then we want this 50 to flatten out and then eventually if the price consolidates here we want the 50 to start moving in the upward direction and that's just simply i'm not trading the moving averages but they do signify momentum and what we were trying to do as we turn the trend in the lows is we're trying to shift the momentum from a down momentum to an up momentum that's what we're trying to do it's all about buying and selling it's all about supply and demand and so as we continue to buy the price up we, we're now shifting the momentum the momentum is now to starting to roll to the upside uh, and eventually when we do have some kind of impulsive move as long as as long as we don't have as if as long as the price lingers in the highs you'll start to see these moving averages turn very violently to the upside quite simply because you're replacing significantly higher numbers with lower 
uh, lower numbers with higher numbers uh, on the rolling averages. Yeah. And that's when you're going to start to see more impulsive behavior as we start to begin to, to turn up the momentum on the price. All right. That's TRVL. Um, I think that there's also something happening today. Um, I saw on the tech on the Twitter, D travel was announcing something. So this is what it is. It's called the X space with the N ride. This is today. Tune in to hear about why decentralization is important in the sharing economy and how NKN org and Juno Network are helping deepen in RWA projects with the infra stack. I don't know if this is what this is about, but you can go in there and you can set a reminder. You can join it. And it's today at 5 p.m. UK time. And if people aren't aware, um, NRIDE is some kind of ride sharing peer-to-peer -peer application. So it's, it's the peer-to-peer -peer Uber NRIDE. They don't have many followers. Give them a follow. It looks like they're creating a protocol. And effectively, this is the future. The future is decentralized applications governed by DAOs, which effectively replace the centralized applications just because of people not necessarily needing intermediaries in the way they transact and the way they deal with customers and clients. And so at the moment, the only way that we can do it through the web is through centralized uh, providers. In the future, you're going to see more and more of these peer to peer applications pop up which are governed by DAOs, and they're going to basically take over just simply because I think most people are quite capable to do business without someone governing how their business operates. Most people can do that. Most people don't need Airbnb to run a short-term vacation rental business. Most people don't need Uber to, to get a taxi, <laughs> you know? So when you have, when you develop an application, which allows you to do it peer to peer, but giving you, if there's a peer to peer, that if there's a peer to peer network that does that, then that will, people will just use that. All right. Any questions so far? Anyone? There's a few people watching. My stream is a little bit laggy. Sorry. Uh, so that's TRVL. If I was to have a look at this um, line uh, idea that I have, which I've been following. So I'm looking at gate. Um, we are pretty much at that point again, the point of no return, dare I say. This is very interesting. And if you look at the price action back when we actually came below this line for the first time, maybe it's easier to see on uh, a different chart. And uh, maybe it's easier to see on MEX. Let me have a look. Um, get rid of these brush strokes. Trend line, there it is. Get rid of these now. If you look at how we actually crossed it in the first instance, we, we had one, two tries before we broke. So we've had our like one, two, break. That's kind of what I'm thinking actually, you know, Although this was a shorter period of time, this is a little bit more extended. I am actually thinking that 
potentially that could the same thing could happen and if i was to inverse it that's what you're looking at it does look like we're at a really important level now I don't know if that, like, if this was a, a bullish chart like this, if this was an upward chart, I don't know if you would buy there. That would be the right place to buy, I, I think. And so in reverse, I don't know if this is a good place to sell. It doesn't, to me, it wouldn't, doesn't look like a good place to sell. Yeah. I do like to have a look at these other charts so uh, and see what they say. Let me have a look at the higher time frame. Let's see if I see anything interesting. Not really. Probably the three day chart is the one to. To keep an eye on because we are at a really critical place now where the price could crazy expand and as i think most people are just holding their breath that it happens with volume <laughs> like really because if we do get a, like an increase of volume and we start seeing an impulsive move and we do manage to get up to high numbers to like 30 cents. I think a lot of people are going to be, I don't know if relieved is the right words, but jubilant, extremely jubilant. I think that's what we want. We want everyone to be jubilant. Sometimes I have a look at these other candles. I have no idea what they mean. <laughs> um, can't really tell. I can actually. Renko. This is the three day chart. We go to the daily chart. This is Renko. What's interesting with Renko is that I'm seeing like significant volume at these two kind of pivots here that have been put in. It's quite interesting. I don't know if it means what it means with the same thing here. And effectively now what you want is you want bounce and bounce and bounce. What's this one? This one, I have no idea. <laughs> KG? No idea. No idea, no idea what these charts mean. Range. The only thing I get from this is you've got a lot of volume in these lows. It's just interesting, right? I can't tell.
Any questions, anyone? See, there, there was a trend line on the ETH chart. Very, very, very rough trend line. And we've actually, we've actually broken out of it now. Um, and you can, with these trend lines, you can clone them to create a higher one off the top peak. So potentially we're still within the, the range of that trend line. You can do exactly the same thing with uh, the Bitcoin chart. Um, let me just get rid of that. Create this trend line. Something like that. So potentially what you could do is create some kind of um, channel. Yeah, I don't know. No, it's hard. It's hard to see on the line chart, actually. It might be a lot easier to just look at candles and just connect the dots. Yes, there's something going on there, but I do think that you know we've we've had a real shift in the way the price has moved, and so yeah, we have to move up now. We have to go up, but I think it's happening. Look, if you look at the price action. Yesterday's. Uh, candle it was this green um uh, it's, not, it's not a dragonfly doji it's that it's an inverse hammer with a small wick underneath in the highs and now we have this more this is continued buying you see that it's continued buying Draw us currency goals. Good morning, Musa Musa. Currency goals. What does that mean? Draw us currency goals. What do you mean by that? So what do you mean by draw us currency goals? I don't quite understand your question. Are you talking about price targets? Oh yeah, David says price targets. All right. So this is the chart to use for the correct targets. And I'm doing two things to create my targets. I'm first and foremost, I'm doing a FIB extension from the all time high to the all time low. And I'm doing a Fibonacci extension. And I'm using the log chart. And it gives me uh, an extension of $5.1. That's going to be my target $5.1. And then if the price continues then the next target will be 9.6 and then the next target will be 23.45 so i have some higher time frame targets in in mind just by the current range from the high to the low so this is the range that's the high that's the low and this is the extension 
based on the range, based on the range. And I'm using fib extension based on log. Now, I think someone asked me to do it based on regular. So if you were to do it based on regular, I'm going to do it now. And just to see what the difference is, if there is a difference. So you do exactly the same thing. You do a fib extension from the high um, to the low. Which one was the low? It was there in October, wasn't it? Okay, but instead of using the log scale now, you would just use a normal scale. Um, and on the normal scale, Hold on a second, let me just try something else. So, okay, that's it. So on a normal scale, I'm gonna be looking at these targets. We're looking at 1.9, 2.2 and 2.5 on a normal scale. Okay, but I'm not using normal scales. I'm using log scales. Why am I using log scales? Why am I not using normal scales? Okay, I'm using a log scale because we're looking at a, an exponential asset. So when you're looking at exponential growth assets, you have to look at the scale on log, not a normal chart, because you're not gonna get the right targets. You're not gonna get the right results. I can't really explain it. Uh, most people will use these price targets based on normal charts. Um, I can't explain why log works. When I look at all the other tokens, I see that log works and normal doesn't work. Or I don't see log, I don't see normal working. Um, I think it's something to do with the psychology of the way people buy and sell. Because people buy and sell and they take profit based on percentages, not necessarily based on price. And the percentage that people are looking at are the percentage of their increase in portfolio. And so if someone enters this token at 1.6, dollars that's their entry and they're longing then they may not take profit at 2.4 dollars at 2x but then they may take profit at 5.1 which would potentially be like a 3x or three and a half x okay so i think when it comes to the way the price moves and the it's bait i think people are more psychologically um impacted by the x of their portfolio rather than the actual price so this is all based on percentages of growth and the increase in value based on percentages not based on the price itself so what that means is that even though it goes quite a lot up it won't look like it's going quite a lot up because you're basing it on percentage increase. So if you enter here, the distance from here to here in terms of percentage increase is the same as the distance from here to here. 
it's the same distance in terms of percentage but on price you don't get that view i don't know i can't really explain it so i still think that 5.15 is a target the caveat is that we make an all-time high we have to make an all-time high to achieve that goal uh, otherwise we'll be looking at uh, a lower high on the highest time frame and i'm not contemplating that i don't think that's ever going to happen and that the reason why is because there isn't really much volume in the highs in this down see how this price moved down really quickly there is volume here but then the rest is volume less. And so if we are able to get back above this place here, that's basically 50 cents. If we're able to get back above 50 cents, I don't think there's gonna be any resistance all the way up to $5 personally. You're gonna get a little bit of resistance at the all time high just because you're gonna naturally, you're gonna get people take profit at the all time high, but there's no volume resistance there. So the only resistance is take profit. You're not gonna, you don't have to trap clear liquidity from trap traders at the highs. So in terms of the volume, the only volume that will be there will be taking profit. If it does go down, it's very likely to form a higher, higher low to continue going up, you know? That's kind of what I'm imagining in the highs if that happens or depending on the volume that comes in and the take profits at the highs maybe there aren't going to be more, that many take profits because people will be aiming for higher then you could potentially just slip up and go straight to a higher target could all both of these situations could happen we can't predict how, what's going to happen at key levels and also the other thing to remember that volume has a large has a large part to play in how the price moves at, at key levels yeah so if you if you're coming into the all-time high and you're not going to get the volume that you want then you could potentially see a pullback because people are uh, taking profit and the question then is how are they taking profit are people selling limit orders which would be the correct way or are they just market selling you know we don't know what how people are going to behave at certain levels. I'm going to put really small orders. And in the same way that I've taken a large amount of time to scale in, I'm also going to take a, a significant amount of time to scale out. I'm not going to just suddenly sell. When I take profit, I'll sell regularly, but in small doses, very small amounts like 1000 TRVL at a time. So I'll spread that over the course of a longer period and just small sales rather than just doing one big sell. I don't like to move the price in either direction when I'm buying and selling. And with a, a, a low liquidity environment, when you're doing big amounts of orders at once, you move the price. Uh, and so, you have to bear that in mind. So especially when you're in the highs, I, I think I don't want to move the price, but we'll have to see what happens. You know, let's hope that there's enough volume to push through. That's my price targets. So I hope that helps. I think I'm just gonna focus on the log price and not on the regular price. I don't, I don't like the, the regular price. Um, where is it? So these are all log. Okay, it doesn't even show. Yeah, that's the one. And you'd have to do the extend. That would give you 1.9, 2.2, and 2.5. So on the price chart, the extension, the maximum extension, you're looking at 2. Then the other way to do it is if we if and when we have our impulsive wave one and then we have a two then you could do 
um, a trend-based fib, then that will be a lot easier. Then you can create trend-based fib targets. Be a lot easier to figure that out on the way up. All right. 